Three, two, one, kill him. <laughs> From the central coast of New South Wales, Australia, it's the number one podcast for the X Men animated series. This is Generation X Men with Bender and Brooksy. Yes, welcome back. Thanks again, Steve. This is Generation X Men. I'm Ben, and with me as always is Brooksy. Hey, hey. Like the name suggests, we are Generation X Men, and you are too. If you're new to this, what we'll be doing is going through all five seasons of X Men the Animated Series, one episode at a time, giving you our thoughts, X Quiz, Tally Time, and most importantly, having a laugh as well. And we are having laughs today because. It's the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favourite villains because he's straight up hilarious in this, man. This is a fun episode and I'll chuck this sucker on any time and uh, we'll get into that soon enough. But uh, first up, it's a bit of X-Quiz. Pop quiz, Hotshot. Pop, pop quiz! Pop quiz, asshole. Time for a surprise quiz. Won't be a pop quiz on Wednesday. There's a pop quiz. Pop quiz. Now, Brooksy, I don't have a lot of X-Quiz keeping up with tradition because uh, it's getting rarer and rarer i think there's you just got to make things up bender yeah i keep falling back on colors and how many times something happens yeah that's fine that's, fine. that's all it's, good it's not good enough for me it I is i want decent stuff i want some more easter eggs so i'm hoping that the episodes pick up in terms of like sneaking heaps of in jokes in because at the moment these last couple if there is a blemish on these last couple episodes not enough Easter eggs because yeah. it's affecting my X quiz. I can't believe the all the letters went away. Yeah, I was really hoping that it would spell something out yeah, really cool. cool. I mean, well, it was, it was sort of leading us to believe this is some Easter egg stuff. I mean, uh, maybe they didn't know that DVD would ever happen and pause buttons would be so yeah. good because uh, everything VHS, you can't pause on that. But uh, maybe they just stopped after a while. Who knows, it could all come back again. A for Avalanche. We'll just ignore his letter on his emblems or whatever. But uh, yeah, for me, I've only got two uh, X-Quiz today. I won't try <laughs> try not to talk it down anymore. But I've got two. I've got two right. mad questions for you, Brooksy. Well, I'll kick, I'll kick it off for you. Yes. Okay, so what book is Beast oh. reading in jail? Oh... I think I had something written down as a civil something Yeah. by some... I, I try to tip my head upside down quick and have a read because Beast always reads upside down. I don't know what it was. What it was. Let's say Civil Dispute by Dr. Henry Marvins. Oh, you're half right on everything. <laughs> it's Civil Disobedience uh, by uh, <laughs> Henry Thoreau. Oh, really? Oh, got half of everything. Yeah. Wow. So you got a half... I must have saw an H, <laughs> but uh, you did. civil disobedience. Yep. That's very funny. <laughs> okay, you probably got this one. What is the number of the city jail? 2575. That is correct. That's probably just the, the, the street number that they're in. If only they had the street name up, that would have been an even more that clever X quiz than the number. But yes, the number is 2575. Which bank does Juggernaut rob first? Is it... Is it the first national? It is. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed that. Okay, and there's my last one. Uh, what colour are Colossus's wristbands? Red. Yes, they are. <laughs> I suppose they have to, have to be red because red's such a part of his uh, colour scheme in the comic books. Red and yellow, but uh, yellow, yellow seems a bit too much because there's enough yellow in Jubilee and Wolverine. So, yeah, I guess they made his wristbands red and because he's a red son of... Um, Russia. That's right, he's from Russia. Oh, yeah, Red Sun. Or Red so my last question is, what is the name of the construction site, Foreman or Boss? Anymore today? Uh, I can't remember if he says a name. I will say his name is Carl. No. <laughs> it's Mike. Mike? Oh, so creative. <laughs> I knew it was like a single syllable boss sort of name. Yep. I try to imagine what American accent would have been, but uh, I don't. When who said his name was Mike? Uh, I... What do you reckon we are, Mike? <laughs> That's Mike. <laughs> previously on X Men. So our previously on X Men is just all the last episode, which doesn't really run onto this except for the last scene. No. But yeah, we see Gambit, Storm, and Jubilee who are imprisoned on Genosha. And uh, they're forced to build the dam to create more power so they can get Master Mold to make more Sentinels. Yes. So Gambit then portrays the other mutants and when they're trying to escape. Uh, then they show Gambit breaking Storm out of the box and destroying the Sentinels. 
Mm. And uh, Storm then creates that huge storm yeah. <laughs> uh, to destroy the dam. Full power of the storm. So yeah, that destroys the dam and the Sentinel factory, including Master Mold. Mm. And then upon the X-Men's return to the mansion, we find it destroyed. One glaring omission from their previous on X-Men. They don't touch that Cable was a part of it at all. Not at all. What no. the hell? He <laughs> He's the one responsible for the escaping and the r- removal of the collars, and he doesn't even get a rub in this uh, previous on X-Men. What's with this Cable hate? Hashtag Cable hate why? Because <laughs> he wasn't there, and he was like the guy of that episode. Him on that Terminator Sentinel. But uh, yeah, another thing, well, people know why if they listened to the previous episode, this was not a to be continued because that uh, unstoppable juggernaut, this episode, wasn't even made yet. No, it wasn't finished. It wasn't finished yet. So uh, yeah, uh, it's time for the breakdown. Break it down. Break it down. Now it's time for a breakdown. Breakdown. Where is she? So today we are doing season one, episode eight, The Unstoppable Juggernaut. So its original air date was March 6, 1993. So you got that uh, couple of week gap here. Oh, okay. For the other two to yes, go in. Yes, that's right. It was written by Julian Clem and directed by Larry Houston. On you, Larry. So the episode starts with uh, a pretty cool shot, I think, of the Blackbird flying. It's like flying directly towards the camera. Yep. And we see inside the X-Men and it takes off and you... You see the back of it as well? Yeah, they do that in movies a lot, the ca- classic camera right in front of the car or plane and then cut to the shot right behind it as it's going zoom, straight through. That's always a cool shot. And we've gone back in time a bit here too because uh, Cyclops is still trying to ring the mansion. Yes, that's right. Yeah, sort of like a recap of what... And there's a lot of repeated dialogue as well. Yeah, and Wolverine sitting behind him is using one of his claws as like a toothpick. Ah, which there should be a counter for the times where Wolverine's using his claw to do something he doesn't really need to. Just a single claw. Single claw, butt scratched, uh, picking stuff out of your teeth, opening, opening up beer. a can of beer or whatever. We we'll always mention it then anyway. Yeah, so it's all the same lines here. The school, it can't be. But there's no claw draw An this time. claw draw. He wasn't yeah. angry. No. But he, he wasn't wearing his mask either. He just threw the mask on the, mm-hmm. the cowl. Yeah, he left the cowl off. So the jet seems to like slow down Mm -hmm. and we see Storm fly out and Rogue flies out carrying Wolverine and then Jean (laughs) sort of levitates herself down. Yeah. And um, then the mansion is just destroyed. It's it's a different shot of the mansion destroyed. But... <laughs> a little bit of different carnage. We also even get a little variation of the rev up music here. It's like, like it's not fighting rev up music, it's but searching it's, it's, it's the searching <laughs> It's the searching X Men theme. I like how there's different variations on the theme depending on the mood of the scene, which I always thought was pretty cool. So how many times does the mansion get destroyed? <laughs> Do we need to start a new tally here? Well, that's a good that's a good point. I, I can't think of it getting destroyed in many other episodes. Uh, but this is where it's totally leveled. Yeah. The roof is on the floor sort of destroyed. But oh, we could start one up. So current tally for a mansion being destroyed, one. Uh, Rogue says that people don't know we live here. Who'd do this to a school? Mm. So we get a bit more here that the X-Men still aren't well known. Mm-hmm. No one knows where they're from. Except for other mutants. Except for other mutants and Juggernaut. Juggernaut, Sabretooth, Magneto, I think, are the ones who know where the X-Mansion is. Now, did you also notice Storm is now in a civvies? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she uses the lightning quick change power to yes. get into her thing. It's the second time she's done that. A call back to the lightning quick change. Yeah. I suppose it's the equivalent of the Wonder Woman spinning round and round and round, but it's cooler because it's got lightning in it. <laughs> So Rogue's picking up all heavy stuff, throwing it out of the way, and Jean's using a beam out of her head for this mm-hmm. one. And uh, Wolverine is uh, digging in like a squat position, sort of like a dog. Yeah. And um, Storm says, wind, aid my hands. <laughs> so Cyclops then lands the jet in the hangar, mm-hmm. and he and Jubilee, who was also changed clothes again she's back into her civvies <laughs> yeah i wrote down that jubilee sweater looks like a weaved basket <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> that's brown it. tones there <laughs> and no gambit and he was <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> suddenly not in the jet no gambit so oh. and then for the rest of the episode Ha! Huh, i didn't even notice that Keen eye, Brooksy. But uh, yeah the previously on x-men was very heavy on it's the heavy gambit, gambit yeah. and then this one he's gone skis anybody else who didn't return no, that was it. Just scam, but just yep. hanging out in, probably fell asleep in the jet. Mm. Should have come back at the end of that. What happened, Wanami? What happened to the mansion? 
I can't do his accent without turning <laughs> no into, into something else. You should do uh, more Van Damme. <laughs> more Van Damme. He's another really hard guy to get the accent right because he wanna wanna. It either wants to turn into Schwarzenegger or Dolph Lundgren. I can't nail <laughs> Van Damme as much as I love him in Hard Target. So then Jean tries to connect with the professor telepathically, but she can't. There's no response. That means he's gone, or unconscious, or asleep, <laughs> <laughs> or on the toilet, <laughs> or having a flog, or having sex. It's like. <laughs> but you can't mention that on a kids, nah. kids, kids program. She's very bossy. And I she, think what the line was, uh, contact me now, you have to do it. And I was like, calm down, he could be very busy. So she's interrupted there by Cyclops, and he tells everyone to come down to the war room. We've found something. Mm-hmm. So also the, the mansion layout is a bit different here because in the other episode we saw um, Sabretooth get knocked out of the wall of the war room. Oh, uh, war oh room, okay. And now the war room's underground. Interesting. Kind of like The Simpsons is like a magic room that doesn't yeah. belong anywhere. I have forget to look it up or follow up on that because I don't pay attention to that shit, but there's like some magic room that doesn't connect to anything. But uh, yeah, that's understandable. And it makes sense for the war room to be underground. Mm. And the other episode is weird if it was above ground right next to the, right next to the kitchen. That wouldn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back from our ad break and Cerebro has a message from the professor. Greetings, X-Men. I'm taking a journey whose results may change our lives forever. I cannot tell you anything more now. Farewell. (laughs) It's a Cerebro hologram. I reckon it's very much alluding to a drug trip. I'm just off to go (laughs) get high with my Scottish friend. Yeah, fuck the professor. (laughs) He's all right. Uh, We cut back up to the ground there and Cyclops and Wolverine are looking for clues. Mm -hmm. And... um, Wolverine finds a bunch of huge footprints and then uh, Cyclops tells Wolverine uh, not to take off and as they have to plan their next move. Yep. Wolverine says, Do whatever you want, pal. Something tells me the professor wants to be found while he's still breathing. Yeah, that's just strange. I mean, they don't go with the, I go with where I want to go. So maybe there was sort of a backlash to that catchphrase. We don't put it in every episode. Because that seemed like a prime spot for it. Yeah. If, it was, if they were going to try and get Wolverine a catchphrase. But he just bees, uh, just bees a smart ass. And then Cyclops comes back with, The Professor wants us to work as a team. Mm-hmm. And that's our running theme for this episode. <laughs> Teamwork. Teamwork. Subtext. And then uh, Wolverine just leaves anyway. Because <laughs> he goes where he wants to go. So Jubilee comes on the scene then. She's like, whoa, Bigfoot time. Are you sure you want to find this guy? <laughs> so Cyclops tells Storm and Rogue and Jubilee to track down Wolverine. Mm-hmm. That's because one of them says, well, where's he going? And and Cyclops says, uh, doing his own thing like he always does. I think yeah. that he's maybe he's finally learning that, that Wolverine is not going to follow his orders so i think maybe cyclops is getting a little bit smarter but he's getting very uh cynical with it now where's wolverine going his own way like he always does so then we cut to i guess it's rogues red convertible you think yeah we've got a red convertible she she's driving so i assume it's hers yeah that's what i thought mm. so rogue and jubilee are in their uniform but storm is not again so <laughs> she's <laughs> de-lightening to power <laughs> She, she's relightening her civvies back on. And uh, everyone's wearing seatbelts. Did you notice that? No, nah, I didn't yeah. notice that. Everybody's wearing seatbelts. Oh, well, that's very smart because a lot of children will watch the program and if the X-Men wear their seatbelts, we must too. And Storm's unhappy with Wolverine taking off again and Jubilee tries to stick up for him. Yeah, good on you, Jubilee. But Storm again. Professor Xavier's first rule is to work as a team. <laughs> We're really driving that point home. So then Jubilee spots... Uh, Wolverine's Jeep and Rogue just <laughs> slams on the brakes and stops the car in the middle of the road. <laughs> Don't even pull it over. Didn't indicate no. that. <laughs> well, good thing kids won't be learning to drive. Whoa, I can pull over wherever I want. Rogue pulled over wherever she wanted and we get Wolverine's iconic brown Jeep. As long as you're wearing your seatbelt. As though. long as you're wearing your seatbelt and slam on the brakes, it's fine. Totally fine. So they decide to split up to look for Wolverine mm-hmm. and uh, Jubilee heads over to a construction uh, site, mm-hmm. and there's a bunch of construction workers in a huddle. Yeah, there's a hubbub going. They're rabble, unhappy rabble. <laughs> because they uh, got replaced by a foreign mutant. Foreign mutant. Ravel, ravel, ravel. He took her job. 
Hey, Mike, you better make sure Super Ruski doesn't malfunction. <laughs> so this is where we're introduced to Colossus, who transforms into his metal form and then demolishes an old building. Yeah, he, he dominates that building. And makes sense, like, the, uh, while the foreman would hire Colossus to wipe yeah. it out. It would take them days to do That's that. That's right. Did you, one guy. Did you notice the X planks was, on the doors yes. there? Yep, that was my next... My next point. Next point you're going to be made because, yeah, I mean, we're looking for X's everywhere now, just like in the departed. So the building is about to fall on Jubilee, but uh, Wolverine runs in, picks her up, and saves her. Mm. And then we get a cool entrance here from Colossus. He walks out of the dust. Yeah, that's a cool reveal for Colossus. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. And He's... he says, Your building is crashed. <laughs> Any more today? Great job. What'd you say your name was again? I am Colossus from Russia. His name is Mutant Scab. <laughs> he gives him the cash, and I noticed he put the cash into his singlet. Yeah. What's wrong with your pockets? <laughs> Carry a wallet, brah. Why are you tucking it into your singlet like a chick? You know, chicks in the movies, they tuck their money into their bra. I'm like, what is he doing that for? Put it in your pocket. And the workers aren't happy with him, <laughs> and they say... <laughs> He's a mutant scab. Mutant scab. And uh, that's our money. <laughs> Jubilee is pretty sure that Colossus is the guy who destroyed the mansion. Makes sense. And uh, she wants to jump in with the workers and get him. Mm. But uh, Wolverine holds her back and says, let's just see how this guy handles the uh, the workers there. <laughs> so uh, Mike, the construction foreman, steps in there and says that the workers can now clean up the site. That, mm -hmm. You that guys can clean down. up. And uh, they don't want to work for a mutant lover. And uh, Colossus is confused. He's like, what's wrong? Was my job no good? <laughs> and then uh, one of the workmen starts up a concrete truck. And he like sort of runs it straight into Colossus. And Colossus just stands there, goes in metal form. And then the, the truck just crushes yeah, straight into the him. The cement truck just gets owned and Colossus doesn't take a step back or anything like that. Which is a popular thing to show off someone's indestructibility. So all the workers are scared now and they all run away from him. <laughs> and he's like, now you run away? What I have done wrong? Oh, poor Colossus, he's just misunderstood. And then Wolverine's got the rebuttal line. First thing was crushing the professor's mansion. And he comes in groin first yeah. and jumps onto Colossus's back. It's a terrible attack. What's he doing? <laughs> he knows better than that. It's a PG-13 attack. I'm in groin first. It's not a strong fighting position at all. <laughs> it is pretty funny though. And did you notice also he already had his claws popped too? Yeah, claws no popped claw already. Yeah. Colossus, yeah, he just, just, then he just grabs him and just chucks him halfway across the construction site into some rubble. Yeah, and Wolverine has the line, guy's got a great arm. Which I think is a reference to their uh, their tag team move in the comic books. They call it the uh, fastball special. Yeah. That always happens. Like it's, a, it's whenever they're together, it's like Colossus will have him in his right arm. And he'll throw him like a like a fastball, like a fastball in baseball, and he just comes out claws first. Normally against Sentinels, just to wipe them out. Yeah. So I looked that up because I thought that that was a reference to uh, the fastball special. Also, a maneuver seven is what it's called in the comic books. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I thought that was cool. The guy's got so, a great arm. So then Jubilee hits him with some fireworks to the face. <laughs> so then he's not happy, so he puts her in the forklift. And then he bends like a big steel beam around the cab to lock her inside. <laughs> the big girder, yeah. <laughs> I like that because it's very, uh, it's a very, um, he knows he could wipe her out. He just, he just behave and just locks her <laughs> up in there. Stop messing around. Then Wolverine comes back again with the balls first. <laughs> oh. Groin first, leg lock attack. And then Colossus just grabs him by the shirt. Yeah, this time he holds him upside down. Mm -hmm. What do you want? I do not know of any mansion. It is a mistake. You're right, Ivan. What? What is it with these Americans? They are very strange people. <laughs> this is a very funny episode. <laughs> it is, man. There's some great lines in this one. <laughs> like that Ivan line would have gone straight over my head as a kid. Yeah. But now I get it, appreciate it, and love it. <laughs> I also wrote down in my notes here, this would have been a perfect opportunity to bring back Jack Nicholson Goon. Uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah. could have been a construction worker. I mean, we, we don't work with no mutant love and scab. <laughs> <laughs> Not my best Jack Nicholson impression, but I wanted, he should have been a, a rear character. Imagine, imagine if the series made again this this era, he'd yeah. be popping up every now and again for a nice 
cameo in the in the show because he would have been perfect here. And then uh, Jubilee manages to blast her way out of the forklift and um, she's worried that he's getting away. But Wolverine tells her that he's not the guy because he doesn't smell like the mansion. Mm. Mm, trust in the nose. And then Jubilee gets a call. So... <laughs> Jubilee. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. Is this a cell phone or is this a communicator, a walkie-talkie, or what? I'm not sure. Well, it's those, it's one of those in-between sizes. Like in the '90s, you'd think, oh, if it's the '90s, it's definitely not a cell phone because they were carrying around those really big ones with the extendable uh, aerials. So right. I imagine it's a communicator, but it looks more like a mobile yeah. phone these days with a little tiny aerial on it. So maybe a like a a late 90s mobile phone, but I think this is just like a walkie-talkie communicator because Jubilee doesn't have any of the X symbols on her, so I don't think she's got her own sort of oh, okay. X symbol communicator, so she's just got to carry around the handheld. So, Neither does Wolverine, but he's, he's not in communication with anybody. So Rogue tells them to get over to the bank as somebody big has just robbed it. This is where they give you a hint of the juggernaut theme. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jubilee, if you got a hold of Wolverine, kindly invite him to join us at the First National Bank. Police radio says it's being robbed by somebody big. Which I wanted to bring up because there's a, it was a lot of the character. A lot of the characters do have their own sort of themes, but then there's really recognizable ones like the Cable one, the Juggernaut one, and Colossus even has like some yep. some sort of I don't know Russian sort of nice music, sort of playing up the softness of him. But I wanted to mention like this this episode and the previous episode, we're really getting more and more of those themes, those musical themes and cues for the characters and. Uh, Later on, Wolverine gets a... He, Wolverine has had a cue from the start, a theme from the start, but you don't really hear it. But uh, it's something I wanted to bring out because I really love the musical themes yeah, for it, each individual character. It's, it's cool a, music. Yeah, it's a signifier of what's to come, and that's Juggernaut's one is so true to his character, just those cool-ass uh, heavy drums. So Wolverine shows up with Jubilee in the Jeep, and he's also changed into his civvies. He quick change into his civvies. And he says, uh, who's busted the piggy bank? <laughs> Another good one, Lionel. Uh, the police have falsely caught Colossus, <laughs> who was at the bank when it was robbed, but he, all he was doing was opening an account. Yeah, so the music, cue was a, the, yeah, the music cue was a misdirection. Maybe we're going to see the unstoppable juggernaut that's in the title, but then it's Colossus and then plays his nice theme. Yeah. And he's looking all sad as he's taken away. So as Colossus is getting dragged away by the cops... Uh, we see Rogue. Rogue finally gets a, a look of, of Colossus and she likes what she sees. <laughs> yeah, she does. And her light is, now that's a shame. Locking up a big, good looking hunk of a mutant like that. <laughs> I think we've found the reason why Gambit's not in this episode. Ah, yes. There would have been too much jealousy going on. There couldn't have been any flirting between the two. That's why Gambit's out of the picture. Good so, solve. Storm thinks that uh, someone should talk to him because obviously he saw the robber, so he knows who the big guy is that they're mm -hmm. all chasing. And Rogue says, uh, twist my arm. Come on, let's play Welcome Wagon to Tall, Dark and Russian. <laughs> and she speeds off in a car. <laughs> so Wolverine and Jubilee stay at the bank and Wolverine's smelling around again. And he says it's the same smell as the mansion. And uh, Storm and Rogue... Uh, walk up to the city jail here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Storm says to Rogue, now remember Rogue, no scenes. <laughs> That's when she gets her flirt on hard uh, with the guard. What? And uh, we won't try and quote this one. We'll just play uh, it outright yeah. because it is... Because Bender loves it. It's very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> you look a little on the weary side, honey. Been a long shift. It was till you showed up. Ooh, it's a tad chilly in here, don't you think? Like they say, cold hands? Ah! Out cold. <laughs> so yeah, he's just out cold. Then he gets knocked out and she steals the keys, I believe. She takes the keys from the guard. Mm -hmm. And they walk around the corner and then uh, Storm lightning blasts the camera. Yep. And then they run down to Colossus's cell. And uh, then Rogue finds out she has the wrong key anyway. So she just pulls the whole door off the wall. Mm. And uh, Rogue says, hi, Taylor, handsome. We don't have much time. And then we hear Beast from the other cell. Yes. Because uh, Colossus says, who are you? 
<laughs> and then you hear bass from the other cell say, Angels of mercy, my friend, known to those who love them as Rogue and Storm. Beast! Eagerly awaiting my day in court. Even before that, you hear a bit of Russian coming, does ya stuck you out there, or whatever. Like You can hear Colossus having a conversation with someone. And anyone who knows what Beast sounds like yeah. can sort of maybe hit, guess that Beast is coming up. But yeah, he's in there upside down reading, was it Civil Disobedience by yeah. Dr. Henry. And he's eagerly awaiting his day in court. <laughs> Good on you, Beast. And Beast also tells him again that his name is Colossus and that he's innocent because mm-hmm. he told him. Yeah. <laughs> Beast is very believing. <laughs> well, he's a good judge of character because he was right. So then the alarm goes off because... The cops have figured out that they're in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rogue asks Beast if he wants to join the jailbreak. And he says, thanks, no. But uh, make sure you come back during visiting hours and we'll catch up on gossip. <laughs> and he also tells G to thank Gene for the delicious cookies. Be- heard it here first, Beast loves Gene's cookies. <laughs> <laughs> so Rogue grabs, grabs Colossus and says, come on, big and pretty, let's make tracks. <laughs> big and pretty. <laughs> uh, Colossus doesn't want to break out either But uh, Beast tells him A few Russian words mm. And uh, convinces him that uh, the girls Are with him to prove he's innocent mm. So it's okay For him to break out but <laughs> not Beast I wouldn't be taking any advice from Beast Anyway he's straight up wrong He's the criminal and he's going to get Put away or thrown, get the book thrown at him But yeah. hey he said something in Russian So he can uh he can uh, trust Beast. He must have something up his sleeve because he knows he's guilty, old <laughs> Beast. He's got something up his sleeve. He... <laughs> up, up his sleeve or he just doesn't give a shit. He just doesn't want to be at the mansion. <laughs> oh, Keeps getting this. destroyed. I can't get through my readings. It's always something happening. I'm just going to hang out in prison and read all my books. And he's sick of Cyclops telling him what to do. <laughs> Beast, you keep clogging up the drain with your blue hairs. <laughs> Shower outside. So then uh, Storm blows the guards away that come to try and get them. And uh, Colossus and Rogue run down the corridor, which comes to a dead end. Mm-hmm. So Colossus punches a huge hole through the wall. Mm-hmm. And Rogue again, she's, I just love it when he does that. She so, so wants to shag him. It's crazy. So they met with Storm there and they run out. And then Storm uses the Arctic winds to ice up the hole. Mm-hmm. And that's when you see the uh, two security guards come running around the corner. I get a big slip up. I wrote down that there's some really funny sound design here because you hear the <laughs> the slipping of the rubber soles on the on the ice and they boom, they land pretty hard. They fall yeah. on their asses, hit the wall upside down, and then suitcase over as their toes touch their heads. But also the thing you notice is like there's this dude there in one of the cells just yeah, watching the, the old gray head guy, the gray head guy jailbreak, watching the jailbreak. I mean, I thought I thought there was going to be a line, "Hey, what about me? Yeah, help me out." I thought that was coming. I thought that was coming for sure, but uh, they didn't go with that. <laughs> then finally, now we see Juggernaut. And he doesn't get a good reveal here. It's a pretty weak reveal for Juggernaut. I think it's an overhead shot. You just see his footsteps. And there's a side-on shot of him ripping the vault out and throwing it over his shoulder. You see his strength. Yeah. Uh, that, that's that's it's not as cool as Colossus's one. No, I mean, anyone. I think, you think all the mutants that we've seen so far in the series have all had cool entrances. Big, strong reveals. Yeah. And that's what I like. I mean, Todd McFarlane does it in his uh, comic books. Whenever you see a character the fir- for the first time, I think one of his, his rules is make it big, make it memorable, and he always does like a double-page spread. Okay. So make a moment of it. But with this one, it's normally when you see the characters for the first time, they have a big line. Yeah. And Juggernaut's big line when you see him for the first time is a good line. He gets the cash, ruffles it a bit and goes, Ah, the f- cool, refreshing smell of mint. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't have that line if he's smashing through a wall and just standing there. I mean, maybe you could have, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, this is uh, it's not a really strong reveal for him, which is a shame because he's pretty awesome in this episode. Just you don't see him very tough for the first time. And it's his episode. Too. And it's his episode. you think they'd give him a better reveal. But hey, I'm not complaining. I'll still into it. Ah, uh, the cool. Refreshing smell of mint. <laughs> so Wolverine and Jubilee are on top of the building across the road from the bank. <laughs> and uh, they see Juggernaut come crashing out through the wall of the bank. Mm. I want to know how they get up to these roofs. 
Uh -huh. When they pull up in their Jeep, wait, quick, let's go climb up the building. Fire escape. Fire escape up the building. That well, would take them a while. These are pretty big buildings. Yeah. But uh, they always appear on top of buildings. And yeah, Juggernaut crashes through. And Wolverine knows exactly who he is straight away. I wrote that down there. She goes, who's that? He goes, it's a Juggernaut. So how do you know? Yeah. D doesn't he know what he smells like? Shouldn't he know the smell? Yeah. Or did he just put it together? Oh, dude with a bucket on his head, uh, big, strong. Ah, it must be the Juggernaut. So the street here is filled with police, and uh, they start shooting at Juggernaut with their laser guns, but uh, and also with a tank. Yes, the, the tank. Up. The tank shoots projectiles. Mm -hmm. I think there was a line: "Stop or we'll shoot." And Juggernaut says something. Ooh, I'm scared. I better run. <laughs> And an open fire on his ass. Huge smoke clouds, huge explosions, did nothing to him. And he just walks through and says, Sticks and stones may break my bones, <laughs> but tanks will never hurt me. Now get out of my way. You're, You're violating, violating my personal, personal space. space. That's a gold line there. The, the sarcasm in him is just so strong in this. He's just so... <laughs> it's such a... I don't know, it's such like a HR thing to say if you're doing something wrong in work, but it's such a perfect line for Juggernaut. You're violating my personal space. And then he goes on a rampage. Yeah, he starts kicking a few of the cop cars the other way and he crushes a couple and then he uh, throws the tank down the street. <laughs> He's dominating. He flips a car and then he just punts one. I was like, <laughs> that's strength. Just doesn't even break stride when he's doing that. And then he just steps across a car, which I noticed was really cool. So Wolverine and Jubilee slide down the drain pipe from the top. That's how they get down quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, they sneak up on Juggernaut. And Wolverine has a claw draw here. Yep. And he cuts the big money sacks and all the money comes out. <laughs> I reckon he would have cut a few bills in half as well. That adamantium <laughs> is very sharp. And uh, Jubilee runs some of the money back into the bank and tells them that the rest is in the alley. Yeah, so then we get two uh, very happy looking... Yeah. Either either they work for the bank or they're just civilians. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, their their demeanors seem yeah they didn't seem too right here. I think they're going to steal the money. Yeah, they were looking like, hey, look at all this money. Yeah, do you reckon that was the Lee Wilds cameo? <laughs> <laughs> I like to think so. So uh, Wolverine jumps out in front of Juggernaut now, and he says, "The hand is quicker than his eye." The hand is quicker than his eye. That's what he says. But when he confronts Juggernaut for the oh, first yeah. time, he says. Like they say, a fool and his money are soon parted. And uh, he just says straight back to him, where's Xavier? And then Wolverine has a claw draw and leaps at Juggernaut and he catches him by his arms. How cool is that? Yeah, that's really cool because it shows off the size difference between the two. And you can imagine Wolverine's coming at Juggernaut, claws first, and he snatches them in, in one hand. Yeah. He's got both arms in one hand. That's bigness. That's power. I love that bit. I knocked on his door, but I don't think he was home. <laughs> and he chucks Wolverine straight into a wall and he crumbles. But then he then he picks him up and he's winding up yeah. for a really... I love that because like, he's going to smash the crap out of Wolverine unless someone comes in and saves him. Which is like, Jubilee. Which is Jubilee comes to the rescue from a rooftop like Hit, Batman. <laughs> hits him with a bit of fireworks. And What's this? The 4th of July. <laughs> Nobody told me. <laughs> See? <laughs> I love how he's just playing up. He is having so much fun. If I could be anyone in the X-Men, it would be Juggernaut. Yeah. He's just indestructible. He's the unstoppable Juggernaut. So he can be an arsehole and he can be a smart ass and everything. He's so funny in this. Yeah, Wolverine's trying to tell Jubilee not to. He doesn't want her to get involved. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, he says, what you going to do? Hit me with a diaper? <laughs> Uh, she gets real pissed with this. Oh, yeah. She calls him an overgrown trash can <laughs> and then hits the ground around him with a fireworks. Yeah, and a bit of an earthquake. Crumbles it all. And uh, he says, someone is getting too big for her britches. <laughs> so then he walks out of the building that she's standing on and just pretty much just picks it up and shakes her off. Picks it. the whole building up. Then she falls like head first into some garbage and then he gently lowers the building. But I think that building's destroyed yeah. anyway. So then we uh, see Rogue come into shot and she picks Juggernaut up and throws him into another building. Yeah, that was really cool. He's about to slam down on Jubilee with both hands or just showing off his muscles and then Rogue grabs grabs him by the hands and just chucks him straight into another building. I love that bit. That was really neat. And his cool line of, how thoughtful, the professor sent me more mutants to mangle. 
So Colossus uh, jumps onto the scene here and he confronts Juggernaut. And uh, he says, uh, why did you let a fellow mutant take the blame for the bank robbery? <laughs> I'm no mutant, tin, tin head. head. My powers are magical. And none of you mutant wimps can handle them. See, his lines always just build. They're, they're like three lines in one. It's always cool. Yeah. I really like Juggernaut. His, his one-liners or his, his lines in general are just awesome in this. So he jumps back down from where Rogue threw him up into the building. He does a bit of a superhero landing. Superhero landing. landing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Colossus throws a car at him. He goes, come on. <laughs> yeah. like, what do you got? Colossus throws the car. So then uh, Juggernaut escalates it, throws a bus back at yeah, it. Yeah, it's like classic like, hold my beer sort of <laughs> situation. So Colossus escalates again, throws a tank back. Yeah, but instead of throwing it, he just charges up his uh, powers. His green glow he's got. His green glow powers. I always crush my cans before I throw away and punches the tank straight, straight back, back at, at Colossus. That was so cool. I always crush my cans before I throw them away. Thank you. <laughs> Such goes, hmm, a good line. I wonder if he's recyclable. Another good line. <laughs> Thank you. That cracked me up tonight. That's such a good line. And then he gets hit with some optic blast. So we know that Cyclops is here. Mm-hmm. And uh, Storm is with him and she's back in her costume again. She's had another costume change. Yep. And uh, Rogue is also on the scene. And uh, he says, didn't my worthless brother tell you it's no use? Hints, hints about who he is. So Storm then picks up a building <laughs> with her wind. She tornadoes a building up. And uh, drops it onto Juggernaut. <laughs> oh, no, it's a, it's a different building. She just didn't give a shit and dropped. <laughs> what if there was someone inside? There's no one with x-ray vision to uh, to see. There was so much property damage in this episode yeah, that we started up chain. another list. Because this a building just got dropped on Juggernaut and it still didn't phase him. Uh, Jubilee says, you killed him. And Storm says, nothing we know can kill him. First reference or usage of the word kill in this. Yeah. I mean, no destroyed, no wiped out, no eliminated. We were only just talking about last last episode. Exactly right, yeah. So they proved us wrong by the, with this episode with all that kill talk. So Jean says she can't get into his mind and then Cyclops sort of reminds him that uh, his helmet protects him from probes. Yeah, so that was a, sort of a thing I wanted to bring up. Maybe that's what translated to the Magneto... Uh, sort of uh, psychic-proof helmets, because right. uh, maybe to give them more of a reason why Magneto had the helmet in the movie other than it looks cool or whatever, or it's part of his gimmick. And also Wolverine's here. He's back in his uniform again. Yep. He's changed again. And uh, Cyclops has an idea, but it's going to take all of them working together for it to work. For a change, and, but it just might work. And he just stares at Wolverine. <laughs> So that juggernaut just seems to be punching his way out of the building that fell on him. Yeah, as you do. And he's like, quick hiding, you chickens. Quick hiding, you chickens. <laughs> and uh, Jubilee appears in front of him. What's this? Baby cuddles again? Oh, what's baby cuddles? Is that some sort of toy for kids or something? Like a like a baby doll or something? Must have been. Yeah, so they're using Jubilee now in the battles. Mm. So Last episode, I was like, no, no, you're 13, you can't do anything. This one, it's like, oh, yeah, you lead the charge against him. <laughs> well, they, they, they might as well use her, have her do something because uh, she always seems to be hanging around. So their Jubilee hits him with some fireworks. Mm-hmm. And uh, Cyclops then hits him with the optic blast. And then Colossus comes running in, shoves him in the back. Yep. And Storm comes flying through, clouds up all the air, so it's all dark. Who turned out the lights? And uh, Wolverine comes flipping in. Yeah, we can hear him flipping. Hey, that was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he lands on top of Juggernaut. And uh, you have another claw draw here. Yeah, and, he starts uh, clawing away at the base of the helmet just to get a little bit of a... Yeah, he gets a little bit of it free. Yeah. So Colossus comes back in now, grabs his arms behind his back. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rogue comes flying in and pulls the helmet off. Yeah, that's some good teamwork there. And he's like, what is this, tag team? <laughs> So it doesn't seem to be phased yet. It doesn't worry him that they've got his helmet off. No, nah, he's he's totally made. Yeah, he's he's still very confident. So then he throws Colossus away before Storm flies back in and she ices up the ground that he's on, <laughs> causes him to fall over. <laughs> That's funny. And then Rogue jumps on his back and she tries to drain his powers. Yes, a gloveless Rogue tries to put the uh, life drain on him, but it doesn't work. No. 
And I think little Miss Cornpone is getting a taste of what it's like to try to absorb my powers. I quickly try to look up what Cornpone is. I think it's like some southern dish. Yeah. And I think that's really funny that he that the writers had to come up with ways of insulting someone's region by like coming up with, I don't know, like gumbo gumbo recipes or just g- general slang and stuff like that i reckon that's really fun ivan way. ivan see <laughs> all that sort of stuff's really cool to me it's like it's not i wouldn't say it's racism it's just making fun of their culture and background yeah. and sticking it in their faces i really love that stuff i don't imagine what a yank could call us get out of here kangaroo jack or something like that i really love all that sort of thing so uh, she sort of seems to absorb some of his powers here because she's, she's got a lot of power running through her. Yeah, she's got a lot of energy, like this nondescript yeah. energy, but her eyes are just blasting out. She's got a lot of electricity around her. And she seems to suck out a lot of like his consciousness as well. Yeah, a lot of those memories. Well, that's always been a part of her powers, right? She yeah. She takes their memories as well as their essence. So, uh, yeah, she's saying, Charles, you're the chosen one. Uh, parents love... You, not me, must destroy him and his X Men. Yeah, so uh, he's very jealous. Very dark thoughts here. I mean, so all this, yeah, uh, the rubber face of comedy is hiding the clay face of tragedy here. So he's very depressed on the inside, but on the surface, he's a comedic genius. And uh, so Rogue flies up in the sky here, and she's screaming, and Storm goes with her. Yeah, she gets a bit, catches her, and tries to tell her to let it go, let it go. And uh, Juggernaut's uh, still hobbling around, and he's like, oh, i got to lay off the late-night parties. <laughs> he's the man. Why didn't Juggernaut get his own spin-off? So Jean floats in, and she's wearing a Cerebro helmet. Did you notice <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did notice this. Oh, uh, why? Oh, I think maybe the Cerebro's there. The Cerebro helmet enhances her powers. As a kid, I thought she was wearing Juggernaut's helmet, oh, but the yeah. artist got it wrong. <laughs> okay. I thought, why is he? Maybe the the Juggernaut helmet is stronger. Maybe it changed to fit her head. I don't know. As a kid, I was just so confused. Maybe the uh, Cerebro helmet needed to give her that extra bit of boost or something. Um, but. Maybe it just wasn't visually interesting enough, her just floating and standing there using the psychic powers because we've seen her do that before. And maybe she, when she's flowing, uh, gl- uh, uh, hovering and uh, using the powers, people might think that um, she's using her telekinesis. But when the helmet's on, it might be a signifier that she's using her psychic powers now. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It just was an odd choice that she rocked up yeah. in a Cerebro helmet. It seems like a crazy producer request. How about she has the helmet on and everyone's like... Uh, uh, okay. That's not how the helmet works. No, I don't care how it works. <laughs> Put the helmet on it. And then, then everyone's like, oh, I suppose we better. I don't want to get fired. That's what I think that was. <laughs> so anyway, she, she does manage to use her powers and uh, she affects Juggernaut. Yes. And then uh, she faints, and then which she... we see a lot from her. <laughs> Should we start a she, faint yes. count? Should this be another tally? A, 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 a Jean Grey tally on how many times she uh, faints or passes out because she's for using a bit exerted her powers a bit because she's, she's already done it once right in the Morlock episode well yeah that's because someone's knocked her out an unseen force has knocked her out but I think we'll start this one as um, energy uh, just she's just run out of energy and faints because Storm's done that a couple of times but yeah. it's the first time Jean's done it so we'll keep an eye out see if she faints from overexertion so we move back up to Rogue in the sky there and she's screaming out like oh they love my brother and not me mm-hmm and uh, she's really not handling this juggernaut power. Well. No, no, no. Big deterrent for trying to take the powers away from juggernaut. And then there's this huge display of power. Big sky beam. She just rah, gets rid of it. The big zoom out. And we see a lot of like, it's almost like the globe. It's Yes, we've we gone. see a lot. We've gone, we've gone into space. That's yeah. how powerful the sky beam was. And then she faints mm-hmm. and she falls out of the sky. She's coming in fast. And so Storm's sort of zooming down to try and grab her but then she just uses a wind to slow her and mm-hmm. then uh, Colossus catches her. See, I, I thought that uh, Storm was trying to get a cloud underneath Rogue to catch her but she didn't couldn't get there in time yeah. so Colossus had to catch her but uh, it makes sense that Storm's slowing her down as well but I was thinking wouldn't it hurt really bad if she fell into Colossus's arms while he was in steel mode? Mm, that would hurt. <laughs> if but she is did, Rogue. If she is Rogue, yeah. Because she's super strong as well. But anybody else, you'd want to be caught by Wolverine or someone 
someone cushy. Oh, Wolverine's still got adamantium skeleton. Yeah, but he can, he can bend and he's got a lot of muscle to cushion the blow. With Colossus, there's nothing there to stop the impact. But uh, yeah, rogue is rogue. So we cut back to Juggernaut here and he's very disoriented. Ugh. And uh, Jubilee walks up to him. He's like, what are you staring at, kid? Where the heck am I? Yep. And we've put it together that he has been hypnotized. Yeah, so Jean sort of comes back around now mm-hmm. and she explains that he, she gave him a hypnotic suggestion. Mm-hmm. So he won't remember who he is or what he's doing. Do you think that's good? <laughs> like, what does he remember? Oh, well, he, Can uh, he remember to eat? <laughs> like, is he going to die? Like, Does he remember where he lives? Or are we going to have like a, a juggernaut like bum now in the town? It's just... <laughs> He'd probably get yelled at for being so big and be accused of being a mutant. But she says it's temporary. I was going to say, is this the start of the segment, Too Many Questions? <laughs> does this raise too many questions, It, it does. It does. <laughs> like, how long does he walk around before he figures out, oh, mate, where's my helmet? And now he's got to walk all the way back. He's like, hang on, where did this happen? And then he's just following all the, the carnage. Like, wouldn't the cops be chasing him? Like... like <laughs> Does he have another helmet at home? <laughs> like, it's too many questions. I didn't even one. I didn't even go to there. Would he remember to eat? <laughs> that's sure. Well, I think well he doesn't need to eat, doesn't need to drink, doesn't need to breathe. I think those are part of his uh, powers that he comes with the juggernaut. But uh, <laughs> those were some interesting points when he got arrested. Yeah, and she she says herself, oh, I don't know when to wear off. I, I can't imagine it would last too long. His powers are too strong. It lasts long enough that he gets out of state before he remembers, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> we, you definitely could have come up with some more questions. For... <laughs> too many questions. Oh, I wanted, I wanted it so bad. Oh, he's going to surprise me. He's got, he's got like 20 questions ready to go. <laughs> and it's going to be about fun. eight. Yeah, at eight. It's not nearly enough. <laughs> Well, if there's any more in the future, let me know when there's... Okay, Bender, give me the bumper because it's time for too many questions. <laughs> so then uh, we cut back to Wolverine here and he says, maybe there's something to that wimpy teamwork garbage of yours after all. Mm-hmm. Teamwork always Teamwork wins. wins in the end. We got the message across. Teamwork is the best. So we cut back now to the mansion and it's uh, getting its rebuild and Colossus is there helping. And Wolverine and Jubilee offer up a room to Colossus. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wolverine's back in his civvies again. Yep, Another yep. wardrobe change. <laughs> Glosses says, uh, it's a great honor, but he, he can't do that now. He must first find his sister and then maybe see more of America after he fixes your house. Oh, well, that's nice of him. I suppose that was a nod to when Colossus was in the lineup of the uh, the X-Men team. Yeah, it's already so busy, they can't fit Gambit in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> can't get any can't more. Can't get any more people. Yeah, too many. There's too many people that get left out every episode. There's very rarely we get a full team of uh, X-Men mm. in the episode. I never realized how much this dump meant to me until somebody wiped it out. Yeah, it's the first place that ever really felt like home. I know the professor would like to hear you say that. Don't worry, Wolverine. We'll find him. So what did you think, Brooksy? I'll put it on you now. Let's get your thoughts of it first. Well, I was a little disappointed with the lack of Juggernaut. I thought he needed a better reveal. Mm-hmm. And he had some awesome lines through the entire thing. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I would like to see more Juggernaut. A bit less Colossus, I think. Oh, okay, okay. I mean... For me, overall, I thought it was paced really well. But uh, again, with your point that you, I think when I watched it earlier on in the week, I noticed that the um, the, the Juggernaut's reveal was a little bit lacking. But mm. tonight really confirmed it. I mean, you, I can I can understand why because when they ever whenever they reveal a character for the first time, they usually give them a line, and uh, his line was just about the money, and that you couldn't start him in the vault just already flicking through it or crashing through the vault. Maybe you could, but uh, yeah, it just wasn't really strong. But that that didn't affect me uh, overall liking or enjoying the episode. I really dug this one, and this one is high on my rewatch. Oh, yeah? I think so, yeah. Um, Slave Island, this one, and a few other episodes in this season, because this one is always... Put this one on any time if I want to laugh, because Juggernaut is just... He's a show stealer. That's why there's not that many episodes of him, because then I just... They'd just be all about Juggernaut. It's like, why? 
He needs his own spin-off. I'd watch Juggernaut, the animated series, and I'd do a podcast on Juggernaut, the animated series. <laughs> just him dealing with all these. Uh, that'd be thing crossing over to all Marvel characters, not just right. the X-Men universe. I'd like to see him having run-ins with Spider-Man and X-Force and Thor. and Thor and all this sort of chicanery and and the Hulk. That'd be awesome. I'd love to see a Juggernaut, Juggernaut spin-off. That's what makes me want to read all the comics about him now. But uh, yeah, this is a solid episode for me. I really like this one. We had a, a lot of uh, themes running through this one, like teamwork. Teamwork, yep. And the other thing I saw a lot of was waste management. <laughs> waste management? There was a lot of really tin and rubbish uh, and yeah. recycle and oh, trash man. Oh, okay. And okay, is that a reoccurring theme? There I was didn't... a lot in this one. I didn't notice that. What I really noticed in this one was the destruction of public property and property damage. Oh, so, yeah. So much so that I made you rewind the episode after we finished watching it and we got a tally of how much damage was done, which we'll talk about in tally time. But I was just watching it and thought, Okay, that's something else that got wrecked. That's another thing got wrecked. Oh, he's breaking that again? Oh, he's gone through another water. Man, this got to be a record for shit getting destroyed in this episode. Because uh, that's what I really noticed about it. And we didn't get any of his backstory either in this. No. It's, it's a juggernaut episode, but no backstory. Yeah, which is an interesting move to make. I mean, when you're introducing a character, you think you'd tell him exactly where he got his powers from, his real name, what his powers are. It's very vague, and I, I appreciate the restraint in this. Mm. Let his actions show what his uh, powers are and how the uh, X-Men deal with him. It's like psychic attacks don't work because his helmet blocks yeah. it. Dropping a building doesn't work on him because he's indestructible. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. And he's picking up tanks and and school buses and cars with ease. And mm. he even picks up a building, so he's super strong. We're learning so much about him. And he even says, "My, I'm not a mutant tin head with a joke in there. Yeah. We find out, okay, he's not a mutant. I think without having that on-the-nose exposition, we find out so much about him. And I think I thought it was really, really good. Yeah. Mix that with comedy and one-liners, and you got a great juggernaut <laughs> episode here. So, what was your favourite part, Brooksy? Uh, I think my favourite part has to be all the juggernaut lines. <laughs> all the juggernaut lines. We're gonna do a compilation of them. That's your favourite bit. Yep. How about you? What was your favourite bit? I'm trying to think now. I don't know if I want to put it as a uh, just a false, all these lines, but I think my favourite part is when it's the uh, hold my beer bit when they just a match of is one up. He's, Juggernaut's just one up in Colossus when he throws a car. car to he, bus. he throws a bus, and Colossus throws a tank. He punches it right back. To me, that's really that's that was cool because it even yeah. has the setup with Juggernaut putting his hand up and waving him over. Like, come on, let's see what you got. That's probably my favorite bit. Or, or when he starts up the rampage and just starts flipping cars. <laughs> Juggernaut plus destruction is always hilarious. So that was my favorite part. The. Uh, the uh, hold my beer, hold my beer bit. How about your favourite quote? Well, I said it twice already in the in the podcast. I'm not a mutant tin head. <laughs> my powers are magical. None of you mutant wimps can handle them. That's the line that comes to my mind uh, most. But I swear there's some other funnier lines in there. But just for, I'm sure I'll, I'll say it next week when I listen to the episode again. But just up front, I will say that that's my favourite line. Well, the, the line that gave me the the biggest laugh on the first watch was the one where Jubilee first fires the fireworks at him. And he says, what's this? The 4th of July? Nobody told me. <laughs> and I thought that was great. During the episode, my biggest laugh was on uh, Tank You after yeah. he gets him with the tank. <laughs> That's a pretty good line there. And again, he said, I wonder if he's recyclable. I wonder if he's recyclable. So um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stick with... Uh, my initial favourite first one liner, and that, that was, uh, you know, I'm not a mutant tin head. Oh, his first line in the episode is also pretty good. The cool, refreshing smell of mint. <laughs> the pun, his pun game is strong. Yeah. that That's his superpower. Awesome <laughs> at puns. <laughs> so how do you rate this one? See, this is one's pretty good as well. Um, I rate, what did I rate Slave Island? I gave it an 8.5, didn't I? Mm-hmm. So, oh, geez, this is pretty close to that as well. I don't, then I'd have to like measure up which one I like the most. Do I like Cable better, or do I like Juggernaut better? This is pretty tough. I think I'll just I'll just say this is as good as the previous episode. I'll lock in an eight point five for this one as well. Unstoppable Juggernaut gets an eight point five for me. Good episode. 
Well, I'm going to use that uh, lovely number that you hate and give this one a seven. The magnificent seven. There's yes. nothing magnificent about it. It's a fence-sitting number. <laughs> But yeah, I'll, I can understand that. Why, it's what, perfectly in a seven for me. It's a perfect seven yeah. for you. So if they got his reveal better, would you have rated it higher? What's holding yeah. it back? Yeah. Just that reveal? Like, like I said, a little bit more Juggernaut more because juggernaut. it's his episode, yeah. a little bit less Colossus. Okay. I think that happens when you introduce more than one character per episode, yeah. which I think is just uh, an effective way of doing it. Getting through an entire roster, one episode, one, episode, one new character could be... Time consuming, but uh, yeah. All right, it's tally time. What the? Oh. <laughs> so, in the, earlier in the podcast, we mentioned how much destruction was going on, and uh, mentioned all the cars and buildings and buses and tanks that went on. So, we rewinded the episode and counted down how many. How much uh, got destroyed, and I have, uh, what have we got here? Cars, trucks, bus, uh, tank, building, door, walls. Those are the things that got destroyed. So there was one, two, four cars that got totaled, two trucks, one bus, one tank, two doors, five walls, five buildings. So that is a lot of property damage from both sides. It's not just the juggernaut wrecking stuff. It's also like Storm and the other people. And Colossus who punched through through a wall as well. So yep. insurance, they want to hope that these guys are insured. And I think that's when you can sort of side with the humans that mutants are causing a lot of crimes and uh, destroying a lot of public property here. And any other tallies in this? We had... Uh... So we did see Beast, but he didn't have any quotes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had three claw draws. Yeah. So three plus the 29 is 32 now. Mm-hmm. We're up to 32. 32 in eight episodes, is it? Yeah. And uh, no more bubs. Bubbless. Yeah. We are bubbless. Still three. <laughs> so, yeah, now we're going to include our gene passing out. Oh, yes, we'll and write that down. how many times the mansion gets destroyed. <laughs> I t- I'm really trying to rack my brains if it, if the mansion gets destroyed again. But, we'll uh, find out. We will find out. But uh, overall, I will say that this is a classic episode, and I love watching this one. So I'm sorry you didn't rate it high. I was wait. I'm waiting for this first episode that you rate above a seven. Okay, that's it for the episode. We're under our social media shout outs, so rate and subscribe to us on iTunes and Podbean. You can also find us on Podcast Addict and Pocket Casters. Like and share our page on Facebook at Generation X Men. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Gen X Men Pod for some behind the scenes photos and videos. Or you can contact us via Facebook IM or by email, Generation X Men Podcast at gmail.com. So, uh, Brooksy, what's up for us next week? Next week we got Season 1, Episode 9, The Cure. The Cure, not the band, The Cure, the episode. So, that's, uh, that's the uh, rogue. It's uh, pretty much a rogue episode, isn't it? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> you have to tune in next You've time. You've watched ahead. <laughs> You've watched ahead like me. <laughs> but yeah, well, you put it together. That's pretty much the basis of the whole movie. She just wants to be cured or whatever. But anyway, that's it from us here at Generation X-Men. Hope you had as much fun listening as we had talking. Uh, and uh, yeah, next week we've got for you The Cure with Breakdown, Tally Time and Claw Draw. Like the Terminator, we'll be back. And we look forward to your company then. Thanks for hosting, Brooksy. No worries. Take care, Bender. Bye-bye. See you, mate.